Well, those are images from what has been a historic, historic Monday. Uh, you know, the uh, Lord is finally home in Ayodhya. Lord Sri Ram is home. And what an event it was. I mean, a sight to behold. Prime Minister Modi, other top dignitaries, everyone there uh, celebrating. Of course, I mean, it's not just what happened in Ayodhya. It's, of course, what's happened uh, all across the country, uh, you know, in our societies, in our homes, in our neighborhoods. Just absolute joy and celebration all across. You're with us here on a fresh new edition of Bazaar Morning Call. We are uh, coming to you live from the same busy TV 18 Moti Rose for Studios. I am Prashant with me, my colleague Sonia and Nigel. Guys, hi, morning. Hi, morning. good morning, Prashant. Good morning, Ni Nigel. And, you know, a once in a lifetime spectacle, you know, is yeah. what we saw yesterday, right? Yeah. But it also talks about the kind of opportunity that India has in terms of tourism. I mean, we were looking at the numbers. $10 billion is the kind of makeover that Ayodhya has got. And Jeffries, I think, put out a report where they said that Ayodhya will receive about 50 million visitors a year, much more than what you see even at the Vatican or even, uh, you know, in Saudi Arabia. So in that context, infra-driven tourism is something that uh, could see a big boom and that's the big theme as well for the market. Well, I think, you know, though we watched it on television, but we were lucky, you know, and many, many hundreds of years down the line, people will be talking about this day. Yeah. So privileged to at least watch it on the television. Would have loved to be there. Anuj got that privilege. So... Uh, yeah. Really, really big moment for all of us. Glued to the TV all through the day yesterday. Lovely moment. And glad to, to be it. part of it. Absolutely. And, you know, this guys, uh, just one more thing, right? We usually start with, uh, <clears throat> it's a three-day week. <laughs> yeah. also. Just, just FYI. I was <laughs> going to say, you know, when, when Nigel said big moment, I said the big moment for us is it's a three-day week, guys. <laughs> and then again, we're off to a long weekend, right? I mean, just look at the enthusiasm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's get straight to it. All right. No, absolutely. Let's quickly tell you what you need to know as we begin another trading session, right? I mean, Saturday was working, so that's the last session. Let me quickly tell you, uh, I mean, just one line before we go into the global stuff, etc. So, uh, I would say the pullback hopes, when I say pullback, I mean the midweek sell-off that we happened and the pullback that we saw, saw last Friday and then on Saturday, it kind of fizzled out. I would say the hopes are still alive that we will actually recover and continue to pull back, even though on Saturday, the close was negative. I mean, the Nifty ended about a quarter percent lower. It's a slow start to uh, the global week as well. It's a macro catalyst heavy week. There are eight central bank decisions this week. Uh, by the way, four of them are G10. So Japan, for, you'll hear from the Bank of Japan, etc. So, I mean, it's a decision heavy week in terms of central banks. Equities were mildly higher. Uh, Friday's Wall Street we reacted to on uh, Saturday, even though participation, etc. was uh, uh, low. And Friday, Wall Street ended significantly higher. Last night, I mean, it was largely flat. I mean, the S&P was up about, about a quarter percent, the Nasdaq about a third of a percent. So mildly up, but the point is we're at new highs on indices like the S&P and I think on the Dow now as well. So even a little bit higher is going to be a new high. Uh, the 10-year is absolutely flat. The 10-year is down about two basis points last night, just still about uh, 4%, 4.1. The dollar index, not very much by way of movement, 103.3 is where it left off. Oil prices, 1.6% up. We're almost up to about $80 a barrel. So oil's been creeping up slowly but steadily. You know, but given the fact that there's been so many, so many geopolitical events and, you know, opportunities for oil to spike all the way, it's not happened. I mean, it's still very sluggish and we're still largely between $75 and $80 now at the upper end of that particular range. The earnings season also gets into full swing. So 16% of the S&P 500 market cap will report earnings this week. And we'll talk more about this a little later in Europe as well. Earnings season for the fourth quarter there is in a full swing. Now, uh, later today, we'll hear from the Republican, uh, sort of who's the Republican nominee for the presidential election, U.S. presidential elections, which is later this year. Most likely, I mean, it, in all uh, likelihood, Donald Trump, the ex-president, is seen winning New Hampshire. He won the Iowa, Iowa uh, caucuses last Monday, last week. And I think he should be, he's comfortably ahead if you look at CNN polls, etc. So an eye on uh, this, uh, this one, which is developing as well. So by the end of the year, when we hit U.S. elections, is once again going to be Biden versus Trump. And, you know, for a sitting U.S. president at this stage, it's many months away, his approval ratings are very, very low. I mean, relatively, extremely weak. So Trump is uh, right, right now on top. Now, uh, just to come back to where we kind of left off and where we go from here on Saturday, the Nifty reached 21,705 intraday. That's the 50% retracement of the two-day 600-point fall. But we didn't close there. We closed at 21,570. So far cry from those levels. So that's the first resistance which the Nifty will look to cross. It needs to close above it. 
The next upside level is 61.8% retracement, which is about 100 points out, 21,800, 21,804 to be precise. And on the way down, I mean, you know, the Nifty's got to defend the low, which is 21,285. It should not break it. Uh, and uh, I mean, you stay above it and hope stays alive. The Nifty Bank bounce has been weak, even though on Saturday, I mean, it was stronger. It was compared to the Nifty. The Nifty Bank was stronger. We ended about three quarters of a percent higher. And this morning as we start, I mean, there's help from ICICI Bank. The ADR, for example, last uh, on uh, last night was up about two to one and a half percent. <laughs> on the way up, the Bank Nifty needs to cross the 38 percent retracement, which is 46,530. It's not very far away from where we left off. The next level is the 50% retracement, which is 46,868. And on the way down, I mean, the recent low is 45,430, which should not break. Uh, and the market needs to, the index needs to stay above it. The gift nifty will come up on your screen. I think uh, we are indicating a 170 point higher start. Uh, so at 21,776, I mean, it's going to be above the 50% retracement and very, very close to the 61.8% retracement if we get that start and if we are able to hold on uh, to the gains throughout the course of the trading session. Sonia. Absolutely. And, you know, the sentiment is positive after even after the event yesterday. Yeah. As we head into the elections, mm -hmm. I think one thing is for sure, now there's a higher probability of the BJP coming back in its third term. And that will, of course, be historic, right? The kind of uh, movement that we've seen in the last many weeks and months both in terms of the economic developments as well as uh, getting, uh, you know, the uh, vote base uh, sort of a bit stronger with a lot of these historic events as well. So that is kind of improving sentiment in the market too. But for our own markets, there are a lot of positive triggers that we're going to focus on today. One, of course, is very strong earnings coming in from ICICI Bank, and that will be the stock in focus. Uh, retail loan growth of 21.4% is what ICICI Bank reported, and the street is definitely going to like that. Axis Bank reports its numbers today and after a solid showing from ICICI Bank, all eyes will be on Axis as well. Not just that, across the board, CIPLA reported very good numbers, revenue growth of 14%, there was a margin improvement as well. Colgate in the FMCG space, revenue growth of 8%, EBITDA was up 30%. Midcap Tech will be in focus after good earnings from Persistent Systems, decent earnings from CoForge. So across the board in the last 48 hours, we've had some decent earnings from, across, from all sectors. Um, apart from that, of course, the U.S. markets did very well. The Dow Jones hit a record high. It's topped that 38,000 mark for the first time ever, and the S&P 500 is also at an all-time high. So everything is coming together today for the market to do well. Uh, there are a lot of big earnings this week. We start off with Axis Bank today. It's a truncated week, but packed in with you know earnings. So tomorrow there's Bajaj Auto, TVS Motor, Tata Steel, Tech Mahindra. Uh, so we have our hands full and looks like for now sentiment across the nation is also positive given what we've seen yesterday and apart from that we have some positive fundamental triggers as well well that's right Sonia. it's good to see that the u.s markets ended higher so no uncertainty out there but there is still some uncertainty on how much they'll cut rates by and by when you know for example the fed tracker was suggesting an 80 percent probability that they'll cut rates at the start of last week Currently, it's at around 40%. You know, so those rate cut expectations as well have been tapered down in March. So that's one point that I'll be looking at in terms of Fed commentary and economic data. Coming back home, three big points I'm tracking. One is the ICICI Bank stock, well, as uh, we mentioned that the ADR ended higher. Is it enough to fire up the Nifty Bank? That's going to be the crucial factor, and that's going to be the driving point for today. But remember, we have, weekly, uh, we have the monthly expiry that plays out uh, in this month itself. That's on Thursday. And the Nifty needs to go ahead and conquer the 20 DMA. On Saturday, intraday we went about that, we couldn't decisively conquer that. And the third point is today is the Nifty Financial Services weekly expiry. So that index will do a bit of a jig in the last hour of trade. What do the FIs do? Well, the FIs have added close to 6,000 short contracts. Now it takes a short position to around 54%. And if you pull up a chart, you know, just in one week, from being net long 80,000 contracts, now they're net short 22,000 contracts. So in a matter of a week, there's a 1 lakh contract swing by the FI. Just take a look at that. That's up for you on the screen. And as I always say, it's not such a bad thing because sometimes when you have shots in the system, it protects you, you know, because if you're not seeing the big FI inflows, then at least shots in the system, if they get trapped on the wrong side, that could be one of the reasons why the markets bounce from here. What happened on Saturday? Well, there was aggressive call writing that we saw. 21,700, 21,750. So the sense you get is the bears believe they have got this covered. In the near term, at least, they believe this 21,700, 21,750 is the level that they can defend. Let's see how it goes. Actually, it should be around 21,750 to 21,800 because there's a fair bit of writing at the 21,750 call. Which brings us to the levels. 
On the upside, of course, you look at the 20 DMA. Interday, we managed to cross it, but you want to decisively close about that and, and get past that resistance zone of 21,750 to 21,800. On the downside, the recent low that we saw in the past week, well, that becomes an important mark closure on 21,300. If that breaks, no one's talking about life below that 50 DMA, which is 28,800, 20,900 odds. So that's the broad levels for you. But the Nifty Bank, in all probability, it starts, uh, you know, well above that 50 DMA, going by what the ICICI Bank stock is likely to do. HDFC Bank needs to stabilize a little bit. Maybe ICICI Bank can take the pitch hit, pinch hitting for now. So that's going to be important. And after the 50 DMA, all eyes will be whether it can scale past the 20 DMA. So the Nifty Bank holds the key. Whether or not it can take the Nifty high on today's trading session. For starters, I think the gift Nifty was suggesting maybe a bit of a positive uh, take, a big positive take. So we need to decisively close about the 20 DMA today. And if that's the case, fresh all-time highs on the Nifty are waiting for us. Okay, fresh all-time highs on the Nifty. Uh, lots of uh, data points suggesting that that could be the case. So let's kick start very quickly on the equities front. We have Chetan Seth of Nomura who says that foreigners have turned heavy net sellers of Asia x Japan x China stocks for the first time in 11 weeks, driven by some hawkish Fed speak, which led to a surge in US bond yields and some easing in the March Fed rate cut expectations. Q4 2023 earnings season in Asia x Japan started on a disappointing note, yet again with the CY24 consensus index earnings down 0.7% so far and ongoing growth challenges in India, in China rather, yet it appears reluctant to embark on a large-scale stimulus which has disappointed hopeful equity investors. <clears throat> okay, let's get you some money market views as well. Abhishek Goenka of IFA Global says markets have paired expectations of rate cuts by the Fed post hawkish comments from the Fed members and strong US labor market, housing and consumer sentiment data. Consequently, he adds US <laughs> treasuries have sold off and US dollar has firmed up uh, a bit overall. He says as a result of broad dollar strength and a pullback in domestic equities, the dollar INR pair is back with an 83.83, uh, 83 to 83.4 to a dollar. Uh, and it's expected to trade between 82.7 to 83.4 over the medium term. Okay. Well, we've got a lot of stock specific action to track for you. Get to that in just a bit from now in our special top 10 segment. For the time being, we'll be running through the list. ICSA Bank, Sipla, Colgate, Persistent Systems, all of them will be reacting to positive news flow. While on the flip side, you have Z Entertainment that will be under some pressure. IDFC First Bank, Oberoi Realty, JNK Bank, Spandana Spurti, and Sensav Technologies. All of them will be reacting to negative news flow. Okay.